This video is focused on analyzing the Higgs boson, the most confusing theory to come from the establishment since the black hole. So are black holes made of anything? <laughs> I mean, since the wave particle duality. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself. I mean, since the creation of the universe. Uh, we're going there? Really? We're going into areas that, that take us before the instant of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So if you're a fanboy of the establishment and critical analysis of the theories that you've memorized is upsetting to you, if you ask me why any of these things are this way, I, I can't get much deeper without I have no idea. I'd recommend that you turn this video off now. But I digress. Let's get back to the boson. Part 1. Defining the key terms. Let's listen to this YouTuber attempt to explain the boson. I recently made a video about the search for the Higgs boson particle, and on that video there were mm -hmm, a the lot search. of comments that basically just said, uh, what is this thing? Yeah, Often no people say that the Higgs gives things mass. Oh, like a and Christmas that present. Is, uh, theoretically, technically true. Yeah, God, it gives them a Christmas does there present. there have to be something that gives other things mass? Yeah, I don't you also get it hear either. God particle. I kind of dislike this personally, oh, but without understanding quantum article. mechanics and field theory and the standard model, oh, it's hard to get any deeper than that. Complicated bullshit. Those things is really complicated, yeah. so it's hard to explain. Okay. But, uh, you asked for it, here. so here it is. We're gonna give it a shot. Yeah, let's get to it already. Where's the explanation? So you know about forces. Electromagnetism is the most common force in our daily lives. We see it when we stick a magnet to the refrigerator. There's a force there. Wait, what? There is a force there? But I thought to force was a verb or an action. And there are only two kinds of forces in physics, push and pull. Uh, force is essentially just a push or a pull. Yeah, I just said that. You see, turning an abstract concept such as to push or to pull into something that is physically present between the magnet and the refrigerator is irrational. It's something called hypostasis... Hypostasis... Uh, reification or regarding something abstract as a material thing. Even if we cannot see it with our eyes, there must be some physical mediator extending from the magnet which pushes those iron filings away. A force cannot possibly qualify as the physical object responsible for performing any action, since a force is the action. And when you come up with a bunch of different names for what is essentially the same type of action, like... Let's see, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, van der Waals forces, electric force, magnetic forces, gravitational forces, and spooky dark energy forces, and you represent them by drawing little pluses and minuses around the alleged objects in question, you forget that the concept of push and pull requires a surface-to-surface -surface contact of these physical objects. Otherwise, you end up with guys like this. Force is how you raise X-wings out of swamps. You, you just concentrate. But isn't that really what we've all been told our entire lives? To just concentrate and think long enough and then maybe one day we'll understand? Or at least memorize what they told us about forces? I'd ask my teachers about forces and physical objects and their architectures, and you know what they'd tell me? That's not going to be on the test. We only have time to learn what will be on the test. <laughs> so, we all memorized. Because failing tests means that you don't get to graduate. And not graduating means that you'll become a hobo. Oh, that reminds me of... Let's get back to the boson. So, anyways, instead of memorizing, 
We can now rationally reason the definition of the term force as a surface-to-surface -surface contact resulting in the displacement of an object. Pluses and minuses, north and south poles, are not physical. They do not explain how an action is occurring, and they do not belong in physics. Let's move on to our next key term in our discussion on the Higgs boson. Field. Does a field qualify as a physical object? Can fields interact with physical things? Let's see what the experts have to say. What is a field? In physics, we come across many types of fields electric field, magnetic field, gravitational field, etc. What do we mean by field? Field refers to a region in space which is characterized by some parameter. Such a parameter, let us call it X, is defined at every point in the field. The Higgs boson is something special. The particle itself is actually not that important. What's important is this field filling empty space. And the Higgs boson particle is just a little vibration in the field. So you may be familiar with the idea that a photon, the particle that carries light, is a vibration in the electric and magnetic fields that fill space. It turns out that all particles are like that. That really the world isn't made of particles, it's made of fields, which means that there's something called the Higgs field, something called the electromagnetic field, something called the electron field, the top quark field, etc. Which means that at every point in space, there's a number that says, what is the value of the electric field at this point in space? What is the value of the neutrino field? And so forth. And it's that Higgs field filling space that affects all of the particles that move through it. That's why the Higgs boson is so important. There are only four forces that we know of. And they are all described by fields that give their strength and direction at every point in space. But quantum mechanics rejects the notion of continuous. And so fields become distributions of tiny field particles just describe to you what Peter Higgs and his co-discoverers of the Higgs mechanism actually think that this is all the about. Can. There you go. Okay. okay, so now we have the Higgs mechanism permeating the whole of space yeah. and what that does is that interacts with our particles. Now some particles as they move through the Higgs mechanism get very bogged down. And they the electron field is more concentrated at certain places called electrons and everywhere else is empty space. But the Higgs field is unusual in that it has a high value everywhere. And to be clear, this high value is not the famous Higgs boson. That's an extra excitation in addition to this already elevated field. But because the Higgs field has this everywhere non-zero value, any particle that can interact with it is pretty much bouncing off of it all the time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hold up there. So first, the field is a bunch of numbers in space. Which means that at every point in space, there's a number. But then it's a bunch of discrete particles. But quantum mechanics rejects the notion of continuous. And so fields become distributions of tiny field particles. I can understand how discrete particles could cause inertia, but gravity? How could any two objects be pulled together by an ocean of discrete particles? That doesn't make any sense. Those ping pong balls aren't pulling each other together. Discrete particles cannot pull each other, or anything else. But Sean Carroll thinks that they are numbers at points in space. That really the world isn't made of particles, it's made of fields, which, which means that at every point in space, there's a number. But does he mean point like the end of a pencil, or point like location? How could a number possibly have a location? I mean, what is this? Is this supposed to be the Matrix? Are these numbers there? Are this, is the world a giant computer code, according to Sean Carroll? I don't, I don't understand. But according to Minute Physics, it's a bunch of semi-cooked spaghetti? Oh, what the, what the fuck is this? These guys are just as bad as Christians when it comes to God, they all have a different interpretation. Does your brain hurt yet? See, 
When a field is given an irrational description, which means that at every point in space, there's a number, or a nonsensical physical explanation, we just end up confused. That's because fields are not meant to scientifically explain the phenomena at all. Fields are more like a cognitive technology, which allow us to predict how an object might behave around another object. It tells us how strong that object is going to be pushed, or pulled, and in which direction. This YouTuber says it best. But what are these magnetic fields? Simply put, they're an idea visualized. Basically, they are guides which tell us in what direction a compass will point. And this helps scientists predict how things will interact with magnets. See, the fact is that any theory which uses a field as a physical object, which interacts with other physical objects or entities in the real world, is misconceived. Fields are the map, not the territory itself. It's just another example of hypostasis. And even when the scientists attempt to conceive what the territory might be composed of, they come up with particles, and the theory falls apart on a physical level, since particles are unable to exert the force of pull upon any object. Their architecture simply fails the required configuration. A child can figure this out. But I'm not done with the boson. I still really want to give it a chance to see how it might bestow this thing called mass on other things. So we'll investigate that further in the next video.